Hey folks, man, this is Monk. We are back with another episode of Classics of Cinematics. And I'm joined as always with my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, folks, so today we're going to be talking about a special family comedy adventure film from 1987. This is going to be called Harry and the Andersons, <clears throat> put out by Universal Pictures, directed by William Deere. And the story goes as this. While returning from a trip in the woods, George Henderson and his family run into something with their car that turns out to be a Sasquatch. Thinking the creature is dead, they take him home. But Harry, as they affectionately call him, awakens. Despite their initial fears, Harry is a kind and sensitive being, and the Hendersons become very fond of him. However, it's difficult to keep him a secret, and soon they begin to feel for Harry's safety because... The fact that they found Harry, he was being pursued by a hunter, and this hunter tracks him down, you know, to the suburban family's home, mm -hmm. and Harry actually ends up going on a run, you know, as they struggle to deal with him and his presence in their home. He's trying to get back to the wilderness. The hunter's in pursuit. The whole town is catching sightings of this guy, so he's popping up on the news, so everyone's kind of after them, looking for yeah. this big foot out there. And, you know, and they, Henderson's try to come together to get Harry back to his home safe. Yeah, yeah. You know, one one cool thing about this, uh, it starts with the title, man. Originally, this film was supposed to be, originally uh, going to be called Bigfoot and the Hendersons. But the production team decided to stray away from that because during promotion of the film, they didn't want to expose the fact that this story was going to revolve around a Sasquatch mm -hmm. or a Bigfoot. So they, they It's switched. tricky because how would you do these trailers? Wasn't he in the... <laughs> no, he wasn't in the trailer. What? No, no. Oh. So they kind of like they teeter tottered wow. around, almost in the same likeness of what we got from Howard the Duck. Oh, you know what I'm saying? How they okay. didn't really give us the duck element. But you know, one thing that I do like is even though this film, I mean, it's jam packed with with a comedy and this this light hearted, like loving family vibes and stuff. It still sticks to the Bigfoot lore. It just takes a different approach at uh -huh. it. Whereas up until this point, you know, when people thought of Bigfoots, they thought, you know, monsters, menacing, vicious, scary, ah, where this one, it changes the approach and the perspective that people have, like just, just almost putting, putting Bigfoot under a new light in a new situa situation, giving us this like fish out of water element with yeah. this story. I, I thought it was like if, really if, cool. If Bigfoot was savage, he could have easily killed people by then. I mean, the legend, just from the encounters, it's one of the things that I wrestle with in my mind. Does it really exist? And, and in my mind, I'm like, it could, you know, but at the same time, if it was vicious and it did exist, someone would have been turned up dead by now. There would have been some, a lot more some, bodies. Some hunter beat down. But, yeah. but for the most part, it seems like these encounters, they can be scary. But for the most part, no harm is being done to these people. They get scared. They get frightened. Maybe this creature, if it does exist, is territorial. And it's just really trying to get you up out of there or get get you from around it. The same, you know? the like, same so. as, as what you get from like a, like a grizzly yeah. bear or something. Where And also, no, grizzly will try to kill well, you. Well, ultimately, it's like, the, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the bad example. Uh, some other kind of bear. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but it's like ultimately you know the animals are equally as afraid of you as yeah. you are as them when he first gets exposed to um this this or i think they're in seattle when they when he first wakes up and he's in their home i mean my man breaks yeah, breaks the house crazy. down worse than a demolition it's crew. like trying to bring like a bear or elephant to your home and, and live with it in your yeah. house like the houses aren't built for that like he's no. not built for this world that we live in you know? no. they took him out of his element and i think that's where a lot of the heart and charm of this film comes in we got a pretty cool cool cast here uh with Lithgow being George Henderson, the um, you know the 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 patriarch of this family, we got um, uh, Joshua Ruler, Ernie, Hend Ernie Henderson, his son. We got his daughter, his wife in here, Kevin Peter Hall as Harry. As Harry, and if you know anything about the films, Kevin Peter Hall also played the Predator in Predator One and Two films. So, and so the cool thing is, is like cool. his size and stature. He is seven foot two mm -hmm. with no makeup on, no, yeah. no, no, <laughs> no, no costume. With with this costume on, he was a little over eight feet tall. Because yeah, John Lithgow crazy. is six foot four, and you can see like Harry towers over mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. But you know, just speaking of of Harry. I mean, what Rob, what uh, Kevin Peter Hall brings to it, he really brings Harry to life. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. gives him a sense of personality and just, I mean, this, this, it, it, it's, it, he's so lovable, so likable. It's like, you almost like, 
want to be in this situation with this family because of what's going on and i mean he's just he's so gentle and kind and curious and like i said he is he is the driving force of this story because you know other than that it would just be watching you know this this family do family things with you know but like in the likeness of what you get from like alf or et or other films of that nature or tv series you know it's when something happens out of the ordinary, how does your family adjust and then, you know, <laughs> work through it? But then ultimately it goes from the, the, you know, the emotional side of it too. Like, you know, at first it's a burden, it's a problem, it's a hassle. And then they actually, this, this, this being, whatever be it in this case, a Bigfoot becomes a member of the family. Yeah. I mean, they, they feel sorry for him, man. I love that scene where the, um, they're, basically trying to put him out the house and he's like he's got to go back you know or or they're they're planning to drive him back to his home and drop him off and the little boy starts crying like he goes he's like oh my god like that's my buddy man why why does he got to go back yeah little ernie henderson <laughs> yeah it's like that's that's where he's from and it's a touching scene because it's crazy too because harry's also emoting he sees this exchange going on he's he doesn't understand english but he's kind of picking up on body language mm -hmm. and tone and all that man and and he, he kind of feels like damn they don't want me no no more like like where am i gonna go because he don't he's away from his what he knows yes. and everything and this is his anchor they're holding him down and all of a sudden he's got to go away from this and that's messing him up and know? he's adjusting to the best of his abilities and that's what i like so much about george henderson as the leader of the family he is the father figure he is the protector of his home but you you also see like as the story cruises through i mean he's a hunter he works at a gun shop with that his father owns and you know up until he he had uh his encounter with harry i mean he had he was one of those hunters that you know, a trophy hunter you know yeah, they yeah, had yeah. the deer heads and all this other stuff going on um not to say he didn't respect animals but he didn't he didn't view them the same. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He didn't look at them as living, breathing creatures. They nah. were, they were trophies. Just something to put on the wall. It was just something to put on the wall. It was, it was, it was wall decoration. Yeah. And, you know, to watch this transition in him, I mean, Lithgow's performance is so great. Just watching him go from like, it, it, it wasn't that he was cold. He just, he maneuvered differently. And then to, 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 to see this encounter with Harry to just really open him up and him, and him bringing this sense of like, realism to this story like you know it makes you think like what would you do if you were in this situation if your family could be impacted by it and i mean Lith lithgow just hit it out the park yeah, you know yeah. what i mean this guy is great so i like like also what we get from the mom is she, she, she's kind of more tolerant like she's you know, but but I also like how she keeps telling uh, George to get to work because because yes. also it's like yeah, yes we got this hairy problem but but we also need you to help pay these bills and keep these things going and that, that's kind of cool. The sister, she's probably the one that's most. Oh, angry she's about Harry being yeah. there because it's like it's just blown her whole world. He stays. Well, she's smelly. a teenager. Yeah, she's yeah. fifteen. She's like, you know, if anybody I love sees the scene him. where she bases on him for eating a corsage, and I was like, bro, is there anything more vicious than 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 a raging teenage daughter? Right, <laughs> it's, right. It's so right. funny to me because this thing, like you said, he's like eight feet tall, and she's backing him down. Yeah, like like, like <laughs> about to like start chopping him. She was like, I was gonna save that forever. Yeah. Oh, God, God, God. And then she like screams. She's like, ah, yeah, and he goes back and it just blows her wig back. Like, cause yes. her breath is like, it's funny, yes. man. But um, you know, and also, you know, what I liked about, uh, about Nancy Henderson, she's just such a mom. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's wild because the only other film that I've seen her in, I mean, I didn't dive into her catalog, but she was yeah, also, too. she was also the mom in Christmas story. Mm -hmm. So that, I thought that was really cool. But then also, you know, I love what we get from, uh, I'm going to try and pronounce this dude's last name, David Suckett. Uh, he was suck, such it, such it. Um, pretty much Jock LaFleur. He's the hunter, which and, yeah, I mean, yeah, in, yeah, this, in this, in this, in this wholehearted <laughs> movie, he has I mean, a weird look. Yo. You still, you still, you know, you gotta have a bad guy element just to kind of, because of course we're not going to view, Harry is not the bad guy. He is not the bad guy element. So, but this hunter and his relentless pursuit of Harry, like he is just, he, you know, cause we also get, um, the, the, I, I, you know what? I feel like such it is probably a version of George that didn't have anybody to soften him up. You yeah, know, didn't have where, a family element. This is where George would have ended up if he just kept this relentless pursuit of trophies and 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 big game. You know, yeah, I can see that. 
Yeah, and I think um, and and it's wild because you know Lafleur he runs parallel with his passion for trying to find Bigfoot as I want to say it's Dom Amici who plays uh Wallace Wrightwood the mm-hmm. the the store owner who also he uh he claims he had encountered Bigfoot and he's on the hunt but he's doing it in a more subdued kind of way like he I think he, he's more curious like a, yeah like more of a naturalist exactly kind of way. he doesn't he doesn't want to cause harm where you know you can tell Lafleur wants to take him down he wants wants to stuff him he wants to yeah. show him to the world and then he wants credibility for it which that makes yeah, him more yeah, dangerous yeah. than the average more, person like, curious and shout out to him man he's a great actor i yes, love seeing he is. him and stuff you know he's a good um you know character to have in here and you know another thing um that that i looked into i i liked is it be like i said with with this kind of having the same feel as as like what we get from et you know steven spielberg was an uncred- uh, uncredited um executive producer of this mm. which it all makes sense mm-hmm. but um you know with uh what really what really stands out um, you know outside of this great cast and characters that bring this story to life is the makeup effects the way they really bring Harry to life um, and that was led by Rick Baker who also did the makeup in American Werewolf in London which that makes all of this makes sense you know what I'm saying he mm-hmm. um yeah I mean I watched this behind the scenes um uh, little, cause I got the special edition DVD and they, they do this little clip, the behind the scenes are just focusing on the, the makeup and the amount of energy, time and effort they put into it. I mean, they individually put in each one of the hairs, double knotting them, um, making sure that the, the, the pores, the facial structures, um, everything that, that, that went into this that made Harry look so real, feel so real, like with his lip movements and, and it, I think it was like four or five puppeteers yeah. working him at, mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, you know, like we said, um, with Kevin, uh, Kevin Peter Hall bringing him to life. Um, but you know, the, the, the thing I loved about it most is with all the animatronics and all of the, you know, the excess makeup and everything, the one thing that they did do was they left the eye holes open. So mm-hmm. that's actually, his Kevin real Peters all eye real eyes, so it, yeah. it humanizes Harry. It gives him, and they the, help him out. The eyes are there, but they help him out a little bit with the brow and the mouth stuff. Yes, and it, and it just makes him feel like yes. he's there, like yes. he's a real thing. Yo. But when you look into those <laughs> eyes, like when, when when it's scenes of sadness mm-hmm. or joy, like you really see it. Like I mean, it really feels like like you could encounter this. Yeah. Like if you were, you know, what I'm saying, like yeah. it's it's just. I, I think it makes it so great because there's the scene as we're talking about this in the background. The scene is on where he meets the family dog, and I thought that was so cool that yeah. this dog, he's really interacting with the dog, he's petting the dog, and like, people don't consider that acting, but like, the way this animal is just so calm, and even though this is a giant guy in a gorilla suit, and he's just chilling, and he's, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like, it's, it's amazing, man, it's like, it's it's really cool thing to see yeah, play and, out in this thing, man, and like also, that, like, his it's moments you don't get like this with modern filmmaking these no, days, man. No, not at all. I feel like if this not was made this day, someone's probably doing the thing, they got a suit on with all the little dots and electrodes and, and they're going to um, animate, um, yeah, you know. they're going to green screen animate, it, um, CG it. Harry, you know. And, and this is, I mean, this is all practical effects, but and also, you know, what I love is is the movements. The yeah. way watching him walk and like yeah. his, the way that's, he waddles that's Karen and cruises Peter Hall, through. Man. Yes, like, that's, like, that like is it's, him. It's a, it's, it's, it's a great physical and, performance. You know, dude. and now, like, now you, <laughs> you got to factor in, this is also the man who brought us the Predator in yeah. part one and part two. And I mean, and he knocked those out the park, but he stated. And it's a different kind of movement because like that Predator was more like a stalky, yes. you know, but this, you got to capture that goofiness but also the strength that Harry has and his his awkwardness in in the house in the environment, environment and, 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 and the little subtle stuff that he's doing yes. with, with the movements of his and, head and like it's and crazy. also I mean like his his curiosity for everything his sense of wonder yeah. and excitement for just all mm-hmm. these new things around him and Kevin Peter Hall actually stated that Harry was his favorite character mm-hmm. and yeah, the cool he's, thing he's doing some cool stuff the, 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 the cool <laughs> thing about it is you know I've said it once I'll say it again you know you got a good thing on your hands in a movie when it spawns a TV series and Harry and the Henry did I didn't even have, know about yes. that. And UK <laughs> it probably got they, half a season. No, no, it actually got. Um, uh, it, it aired from ninety one to ninety four, and in, in, in the in the UK. Oh, okay, I was about to yeah, say, and you can stream it on. Here. Um, you can stream it on. Uh, there's a couple streaming platforms. It's not on like Tubi That's or Pluto. Um, I'm looking. I can see Roku. the cover. Yeah, was that Peter Hall? But Peter him? Hall, he re he reemerged and played his role as Harry until he passed away in ninety three. Mm, might have killed him. Damn. Yeah, so because I'm looking now, there's a different people playing. The family, like, yes. As I see the cover yes. of it. 
Wow. But, I mean, but just, I mean, that's, and that was just cool. I mean, he loved this role so much that he even brought it back for the TV series. And, and then, and like, that's ultimately what he ended up, you know, doing until his untimely passing, man. That's wild. I had no idea. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, man. So, so, so it, it plays out, man. Like I said, man, those effects and that makeup stuff it, it's beautiful to witness, man. Um, I do just generally enjoy how this story plays out. It takes place in Seattle. Uh, which is that Pacific Northwest area is the biggest concentration of Bigfoot sightings. So yeah. they're staying true to reality a little yes. bit, you know, with by placing the film there. And it's cool, man. Even to this day, man. And if you really look at that area, man, there's parts of that area like like um, you know, in that like where it's pretty much green, dude. If you look down, yes. you're flying over it on a plane. There's definitely parts of that area, Oregon, uh, Washington State, uh, going up into Canada. That no one, no human has stepped foot on. Just because right. you, there's no roads into that. If you want to get in there and you really want to look for Bigfoot, you got to get in there and, and, and walk through that stuff. And yep. most people really haven't. So it, I think it's cool. It's a cool thing because it leads to the possibility and the idea that there could be a giant ape like or man like creature out there that, that does exist, Absolutely. man. Like, I, and I don't know. Bigfoot is one I haven't gave up on. I'm not going to sit here and say it definitely exist but if a story came out the other day and somebody seen or we got like a real good photo one day and i'm like man i, it's I wouldn't possible. be surprised yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> honestly i'm with you the likelihood of me seeing somebody say hey, bigfoot is here i think that that is a little more likely than someone saying they saw a green martian come out from the sky not to say mm-hmm. aliens don't exist either to each his own we believe what they believe <laughs> about, about, you know? about 50 50 uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know <laughs> but, the, but world, yes. the world is big Big, man, it's, it, it it's is. crazy because it, it, we, it, it, we're finding new life every day, man. Like every every not every day, but but all, often, man. You know, well, shit. The, the ocean, ocean is proof yeah. of that. Yes, yes. <laughs> the deeper <laughs> they go, dog. The deeper they go. Out. Some we of see, that stuff looks like stuff aliens. All the time, or animals that we thought were extinct, they find. Oh, yeah, you know, man. Like, oh, this Joyce Rivera survived yes, in his pocket exactly. that hasn't been touched by but, man. You know, and and so. I, and and you're absolutely right. Like when it comes to this setting, I love these outdoor shots. I mean, it's just Ooh. beautiful landscapes. What we get from the beginning, I thought it was really cool because like it gives you this POV look, and then like it's almost like feet stomping. So you get a sense that at a, for a point. You might be watching Harry Cruz through his natural element, but then you're also seeing that it's, um, mm-hmm. you know, Ernie and, uh, and George Henderson, you know, they're out on their hunting trip. But then when they're driving down the mountain, it just looks so serene and so yeah. chill. I mean, the yeah. only, the only thing that, that pretty much puts a, a hitch in their giddy up is when they hit Harry. You know what I'm saying? They're lucky that the car still works. <laughs> he's wilding though. You know? The way he's driving through there. The <laughs> yeah, he was like, dipping. Like, he's like, I know these roads. Are like yeah, 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 yeah. Come on now. You don't got to drive like but, a maniac. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's deers <laughs> crossing the road. I mean, you, you, you know, down trees. All kinds of stuff. But then, yeah. you know, it, it, it's really cool that, I mean, we get we get these, these just visually appealing, you know, outdoor location shots. But then also this house setting. I mean, that's where, like, like I said, all of the wreckage and the damage. And it's not done perfectly. Purposely, it's just showing like what could really happen if thrust into this situation. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, if you bring anything from the wild, untamed, out of its natural element, and bring it into your home, this could be the outcome. Yeah, man. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, one of my favorite moments though is when Harry leaves out on his own and he's oh, he's cruising through the city. <laughs> yeah, he's, in, he's in that urban environment. He's in people's backyards. He's in alleyways. And there's a point where all he has to do is cross the highway. Yeah, which is it was kind of. The way it played out, and he's on his way home. He, yeah. he almost found his way back, but the highway is presented as so crazy. Is just I don't know why there was so much. Maybe it was rush hour because I don't know what time of the year this takes place. But but dude, it's just you know semi trucks, and he's just sitting there, and he just gets dejected. He's like, "Fuck, right, no, go back the other way, bro. But, it's too much." You but know, he's almost there, and I'm like, yeah, "What if you waited like a couple smell hours?" It. Until till maybe three in the morning when the traffic died down, you probably could have made it. But, but it's it. still like it's it's crazy. You know man. my favorite my favorite scene when he's cruising through uh, through the city and just 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 you know all this this sense of wonder and everything is when he sneaks up to the one uh, the one window and he's watching the woman boil the chicken. Oh, and yeah. then he turns around and there's another couple going into a hot tub and mm-hmm. and, and he's watching the woman get <laughs> yeah. in looking at the chicken. He's like. 
what the hell is going yeah, yeah, on yeah, here? Yeah, like, he's just having issues just, dealing just, with just trying to reality, figure man. it all out, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's all. interesting, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that those moments, man. I do think this thing probably runs a little too long, man, because this is like a, this is like an hour fifty minute runtime, which yeah. is crazy, man. I, for some reason, I remember this is ninety minutes, but I think they take a little bit of extra time with some of the some of the shit could have got cut but but it's still you know what I'm saying as I watch it I, I'm still getting those warm feelings of watching this when I was a kid I'm laughing when Harry's laughing I'm 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 having a good time he's sitting on a couch curled up with a dog watching some old classic comedy with a monkey in it and he's just going off he's laughing laughing <laughs> he, 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 uh, dip with chips like it, it's wild man it's wild seeing this man it, it, it does yes. it, you know it, it's crazy because I think I posted about this, like, they don't make them like this no more. And I don't mean, like, just, you know, the traditional way of filmmaking. Either. But but this story, I don't think it's going to get off the cutting room floor back then. It's too ridiculous, yes. you know, for today's audiences. And I don't know if this film could have thrived and did as good as it did, you know, now as it did back then. Absolutely. Like, like, like I don't think, I think we're too cynical now to even, you know, um, to submit ourselves well, to the charms of a film like and this. And also, man. to your point, I think that the, that, that we're also too desensitized. This movie leads with heart and emotion, and you know, not to say that that the emotional compass of the world is 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 non-existent, but we've just been overexposed to so many mm-hmm. things now. Especially like this is a film that would, I mean, it's family fun, but it's more appealing to the younger crowd. And I mean, I think that you know, with the you know the the usage of the internet and the mm-hmm. things that they're exposing themselves to at such a young age like something like this like nah I'd rather watch you know some reality show yeah, or it, something like it that definitely won us over in, in the, the time that it Absolutely. came out I think they had about a 50 million dollar box office haul and they I did I see this off of a 10 million dollar budget yeah that's great and you know and you know a majority of that 10 million went into the co- uh, the makeup and costume mm-hmm. design work for Harry yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying and also I love what we get from the score um, is uh, Bruce Broughton uh, do, uh, composed this film score and I mean it's just it just really like adds to the emotion and that 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 feel good feel that we get from this. And I looked into his catalog, bro. My man has done work. Like he also did the scores for Homeward uh, Homeward Bound one and two. He did Bambi two, The Rescuers Down Under, one of my personal mm. favorite Monster Squads. And then he um he did Tombstone. Oh, and also crazy. um John Ritter uh stay tuned man mm. which is another one we're going to bring up for the show at some point too I love that movie rest in peace John Ritter but yeah man I mean I think you know with 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 all of that 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 just wholehearted music and everything going on just to really emphasize these feel good moments it mm-hmm. was just it was great man yeah and shout out to the legacy man um speaking of like there's been a few Sasquatch movies that came out since then. I think yes. more recently there's been a lot of horror tinge Sasquatches. Yes. Um but I do want to mention one that is actually coming out um next month and I saw this trailer when I was at the movies a few weeks ago. This one is called Sasquatch Sunset and this is crazy because the film's premise is really about us following a family of Sasquatches as they live and adapt to a modern world encroaching on them. And that's crazy. They said this film oh, wow. is, um, has no dialogue. Like, there was no dialogue in this trailer I saw, but but it was kind of, it seems more like a comedy. And these it's just showing these Sasquatches out in their daily lives, man. It's pretty interesting, man. If you want to uh, take a look at that, man. Sasquatch Sunset. The trailer looks pretty hilarious. And I think I'll take the chance and, you know, go see it. Just why not? Because it's I, in theaters. I mean, it's relevant to today's world. I mean, even if it might not, you know, pertain to Sasquatches. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think of, 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 of the deer population or mm-hmm. other animals. I mean, as we are chopping down their environments just to put up more houses that cost too much for your average everyday person to afford and to live in anyways. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's, it's empty housing. It's interesting because um, um, it's got some pretty big people in the cast. We got uh, Riley Keough, Nathan Zellner, uh, Jesse Eisenberg is uh, probably the big um, um, actor. Okay, okay. It's funny, when you see this trailer, his Sasquatch actually favors him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> we got also Kieran Culkin. I'm thinking that's one of the Culkin um, siblings. But, but I think yeah, that's his yeah. sister, right? Possibly, yeah, I think so. But I'm looking forward to see you know how this comes out. Man, I'll check this out. When oh, it hits, uh, and also you know, you know uh, to the legacy and just um, the awards of this um, 
Shout out Rick Baker again because uh, in 1988 he did win the Academy Award for Best Makeup. Mm, yeah, in this film. that's cool. So you know you pulling gold medals too. Mm-hmm. That's also something that does <laughs> yeah. not fall to the wayside, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's dope, man. But yeah, I think we could wrap this one up, man. This this definitely was a really fun rewatch, man. You know, I had a good time. Like like it kind of brought back some memories. Like you know, and I'm just sitting here watching this with a smile on my face because like it is ridiculous on paper, but to take the time and see it play out, I think this is still a fun one to watch with your family and kids and just have a good time and 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 you know getting to know harry and and the hendersons you know <laughs> it, 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 it is really really fun so speak. it is really fun i'm with you 100 because i mean at this point in my life 87 when this was coming out i was either uh it was there was no gray area i was either watching the horror movies that mm-hmm. I should not be watching, that mm-hmm. I love still near and dear to my heart, or I'm watching family movies like this, or, or things like like Howard the Duck, or mm-hmm. or Alf, or or yeah. whatever the case may be, <laughs> and um. You know, also, you know, I love the energy at the at the the third phase. This really brings it comes full circle well, and just to that to the point of that show you were talking about. I like how they bring out these uh, the the other Sasquatches. They show mm-hmm. that Harry did have a family element, yeah, that was and there cool, was man. things going on. <laughs> that was and cool. That final scene. An, it's uh, almost, you know, it's almost like Predator Two. Yeah, when the Glover rolls out, yeah, and all the uh, other predators exactly, you're like whoa, like yeah, like, all they, all one of them needed to do was give like lift gal yeah. like some some kind of carved up tree branch, like hey, we've been we, <laughs> we get out. <laughs> this has been my walking stick for thirty years. You hear it's yours, but also um one thing that I did I also like is at the very end they um while the credits are rolling they they have this part this where they're showing uh, lift gal doing these sketches and stuff and the sketches are coming to life. That, that is the thing. I think that <coughs> probably might have been stuff that got cut because because he was uh, um, also a great artist. He just yeah. was stuck working at his dad's joint. Yeah, but you know, dog. Like when I was looking at <laughs> yo, it, the first thing it made me think of is that uh, take me take on me video from Aha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I was like, I was like, oh wow, look at that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it almost is <laughs> like it almost is like animated storyboards. Yes, that, 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 you know from the film. Yes, you know? man. That that's just a reminder how great it was to, to be in, around in the '80s and to see it in real. time time man yes yeah, yeah, so i'm with you 100 percent, man the rewatch was great it's just it's, it's all smiles a mm-hmm. lot of laugh with a lot of laughs with this like you know with 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 good um wholehearted you know family values and and, and things going on underneath all of the comedic value as well man i i it's i strongly suggest yeah if you haven't seen it definitely check it out and if you've seen it watch it again it's fun yeah folks and with that we out of here man make sure you click below check out our merch subscribe to the channel follow us on instagram at classes of cinematics you catch me at monkey blood on twitter and instagram and this is bobby blockbuster as always you can catch me on the next show all right folks we out peace